So we'll be talking about the common nail disorders in children. So coming to the nail anatomy. <clears throat> so we'll be basically talking about uh, germinal matrix or the pro uh, the basically the germinative epithelium from which the nail plate arises. There is this proximal nail fold, which is at the uh, proximal end of the nail bed and the distal nail folds and the lateral nail folds. There is hyponychium, which is basically a space between the nail bed and the distal phalanx. So with this, we come to the common disorders uh, in children in the nail. The most important is the physiological alterations. So this is one of the commonest entity which we should know about because the parents are pretty worried. And But these are physiological alterations which are commonly present and the children can uh, outgrow these and we just need to reassure the uh, parents. Then there are inherited and congenital conditions, infections, inflammations, tumors, trauma, and the systemic and the nutritional deficiencies. Now coming to the physiological alterations in nails, uh, these are basically present very commonly in children. They disappear as they grow. They do not require any treatment and reassurance to parents is just the only treatment which we should just tell the parents. <clears throat> this is a slide basically telling us the various physiological changes from newborns till the age of seven years. We'll be talking about it uh, in the future, further slides. Coilonychia is the first one, which is basically a concave shaped nail. Swati, you can change the slide. Flat or the concave surface. 33% of infants, uh, great toes are infected, uh, are affected because of coilonychia. And they usually disappear by the age of 10 years. So just a reassurance and that's it. Onychoschisia or onycholysis is a type of fragility like a horizontal or a lamellar splitting of the distal portion of the nail plate. Physiologically, in around 27 to 29% of the infants, it's present. Otherwise, thumb sucking and trauma can also lead to onychoschisia. Onycholysis is basically uh, further evolution of the nail uh, plate, so which can also be seen uh, physiologically. Leukonychia, we all have seen, as the name suggests, leuko means white, nikia means nail. So it's a whitening of nail. There are various types of leukonychia. True leukonychia, which basically affects the nail matrix pathology. Apparent leukonychia, which is the nail bed pathology. And pseudo leukonychia, which is exogenous. Sometimes there are total, like the whole nail uh, plate gets uh, white, which can be a total leukonychia. Punctate is what we see commonly in newborns and infants is basically a minimal trauma to the nail matrix at birth. Normally, myths are that uh, parents come and say that uh, these white changes are happening. Is it deficiency uh, of uh, calcium or vitamin D? So these are basically minimal trauma to the nail matrix and the children mainly outgrow these. There is an entity also called transverse leukonychia, which is pretty rare and it's restricted to great toes due to trauma. So this is a picture. You can see punctate uh, leukonychia as uh, marked by the red arrows. So very commonly seen in uh, the growing uh, age group uh, children, nothing to be done. Bio's line are indentations. They are basically, they run across the nails. They appear when the growth at, at that particular area under the cuticle is interrupted, which could be because of injury, which could be because of severe illness, and it could also present physiologically. So in 92% of the newborns due to intrauterine stress, we can see Bue's lines, and normally the nail from, with, uh, from below comes uh, normal and it just outgrows. Onychomedesis is a type of uh, proximal separation of the nail plate from the nail matrix. And this is again due to temporary session of the nail growth. So Buse lines can lead to onychomedesis. Is, these are the terms which we just uh, should know uh, that makes uh, our life a little easy. So this you can see in the picture, you can see these white lines. So this child probably had some uh, injury or some illness during that time the uh, growth of the nail was affected and from below that the new nail has started to grow the other picture shows a kind of uh, an icomedesis which is very apparent so this is a case uh, my case of hand foot mouth disease so you can see a very nice uh, uh, buse line and an icomedesis also in the picture 
Next slide. Nail pitting is superficial depressions within the nail plate. Could be physiological, could be uh, because of other diseases. It's basically a defective characterization of the proximal matrix. Clubbing characterized by increased transverse and longitudinal curvature of uh, with soft tissue hypertrophy. It could be idiopathic, but there are other congenital and hereditary uh, diseases as well as acquired uh, reasons for clubbing. <clears throat> periangle uh, pigmentation is a transient reticular pigmentation in the periangular area. Also, the proximal nail fold and the dorsal digit can be seen in infants around six months of age and usually fades after two years of age. Exact reason is not exactly known, but it may be due to reactivity to the maternal pigment hormones. We don't have to do anything if there is no other pigmentation, nothing anywhere on the body. We can just tell the parents that it will fade away. This is one of the congenital, very exclusive uh, disease for children is the congenital malignment of the big toe nail. In this, the nail plate of the big toe deviates laterally from the longitudinal axis of the distal phalanx. Uh, it's an autosomal dominant inheritance. It, the nail becomes triangular and shows dystrophic changes because of repeated trauma to that area. Anycholysis or the evulsion of the nail bed happens and uh, surgical treatment is required. And the best result shows if it is done before two years of age. Now, coming to the infections of nails, the most commonest we see is the onychomycosis. As the name says, it is infection of the fungal infection of the nail apparatus. Children are less affected. Incidence, as you can see, is around 0.4 to 2.6%. More common in children more than two years of age. Predisposing factors are if there is associated tinea of the feet, fungal infections in other family members or any immunocompromised states. Down syndrome also has been uh, seen with the increased rate of onychomycosis. So this is one of the, the most common onychomycosis which we see in children is the candidial onychomycosis in which uh, basically congenital uh, candidiasis. Next slide, please. Uh, congenital cutaneous candidiasis, perinatal candidiasis or immunosuppression. The fingernails are uh, mostly involved as compared to the toenails and in less than two years of, uh, less than three years of age. It basically presents with oral candidiasis. They could be associated paronychia and there could be thickening of the soft tissues. Nail plate is thickened. It becomes crumbly and it discolored with hypertotic areas, hyperkeratotic areas. You can see in the next slide, the picture of a, a characteristic uh, candidial onychomycosis in a very small child. So you can see the crumbly nail plate. There is little bit of hyperkeratosis at places. So we basically need to treat onychomycosis with the so topical treatment in children is effective it is faster because it's thinner the nails are thinner so the application goes pretty nicely so cyclopirox 8% once a daily once a daily application or amarophin 5% once a week applications for fingernails it's around uh, 2 to 3 months for uh, uh, toenails it could lead up to 6 months of treatment systemically if there is multiple nail involvement uh, if there is more than 50% of the nail plate involvement and if there is suboptimal topical penetration, then uh, oral uh, fluconazole in the dose of 5 mg per kg uh, 3 to 4 times a week, grisofilmin 20 mg per kg per day, terbinafin in the various doses can be given to the children. Coming to another uh, entity, which is the paronychia, which we also commonly see it can be because of both either bacterial, viral, or fungal infection, like we saw in candidial uh, uh, onychomycosis. The most common cause for ba uh, bacterial paronychia is Staphylococcus aureus and beta hemolytic streptococcus. The predisposing factors is nail biting. So we have she seen children biting the nail, which leads to basically uh, inflammation and injury to the lateral nail folds, resulting in the infection, finger sucking, nail picking, and hangnails. Hangnails is basically the uh, lateral nail folds have these skin, which uh, are called hangnails. So in this, we can see a edematous, uh, edi edematous finger with a lot of pus which is collected, and uh, it can lead to dystrophy of the nail. It can lead to proximal nail fold uh, changes. 
the treatment for this is sometimes uh, definitely behavioral changes is must. So we have to stop the child from uh, thumb sucking as well as uh, biting nails. We need to compress the digits. Incision and drainage has to be done. Oral antibiotics in the form of amoxicillin, clavonic acid, cefodroxyl. And sometimes chronic pranonychia can also uh, be there. Very rarely seen in children, but that is because of the loss of cuticle, which can lead to this. Hepatic vitiligo or the inflammation of the nail because of the herpes simplex type 2, again seen in less than two years of age. It's basically a grouped erythematous vesicles associated with pain and swelling. It can lead to acute paronychia, onycholysis, samungal hemorrhage. It is self-limited, but there is uh, recurrences, which is there. So early diagnosis and oral antivirals leads to rapid recovery. You can see in the next picture, there is, uh, you can see grouped vesicles, which have actually coalesced to form a, something like an ulceration of the proximal nail fold. Uh, so this needs oral acyclovir. Hand, foot, mouth disease. I wanted to bring this up because in the last few years, we have been seeing a lot of hand, foot and mouth disease. So it's a common self-limiting disease in children caused by Coxsackie, A16 and Entero 71. Apart from the skin changes, we have seen around 20% of the children showing some of the other nail changes, which occur from three weeks to 12 weeks, or in discoloration of the nails, views lines, onychomedesis. Fingernails are involved more than the toenails. Seven is the average number of digits involved in the case of uh, hand, foot, mouth disease. It's all due to the nail matrix inflammation. There is spontaneous recovery. So in the last couple of years, we have seen parents coming up after three, four months of uh, hand, foot, mouth disease, uh, coming up with nails which are being evulsed. So we just have to tell them that uh, it will get better. And it is because of the hand, foot, mouth, which you had three, four months back. So I shared the picture. So this is another case of mine, which had a, a pretty bad uh, onychomyces with slightly infection over the top pseudomonal infection that is that greenish uh, discoloration now coming to another entity is the inflammatory nail diseases in which the most commonest is tra traconychia which is again a very exclusive uh, to children it's a self-limiting morphological entity in this the child presents with thin nails with longitudinal ridging nail plate roughness opacity sandpaper appearance and along with colonychia and cuticle hyperkeratosis it can be idiop idiopathic, mostly seen in children. Alopecia areata is another entity in which we can see trachonychia, psoriasis, lichen planus, and eczema. Uh, most of the times, all the 20 nails can be involved, and it is also called 2020 nail dystrophy. It has a benign course. Emollients like moisturizers can be given. Topical steroids and topical retinoids have shown good results. So this is the picture. You can see there is this longitudinal ridging. There is roughness of the uh, surface of the nail uh, along with the little bit of uh, sandpaper appearance. So these children, out, so the, in, this, the, until unless there is any underlying disease, uh, idiopathic, normally out, uh, the nail gets better in some time. Another entity which is again exclusively to children is the parakeratosis pustulosa. It's a chronic disease. In this, usually only a single finger, most commonly the thumb or index finger is involved. Uh, early changes in the form of eczematous changes associated with mild distal subungual hyperkeratosis and onanaculosis happens. It has been seen it has been said uh, to rule out any of the uh, history other uh, or on other skin uh, areas of knee of psoriasis or atopic or contact and usually distal edge Alopecia, as we talked, uh, so if a child presents with alopecia patch, we should uh, see the nail. The child. So, only seen in children, alopecia. Rata. So, rises is the next. 
teeth and deep pits, thick nails, leukonychia, some of the This is another uh, uh, entity which uh, can also lead to nail involvement. So topical hypotensive steroids, calcibitroin or tazarotene in a form of uh, creams and ointments. Sometimes if it is very severe, then intralesional trimicillin in the uh, dose of one milligram per ml can also be given in the nail bed. So this is a case with nail pitting, which we can see. We have to also uh, see other areas on the body. Tumors, not very common. The benign tumor, which we very commonly see in children, is the warts or the uh, HPV virus, uh, which leads to the periangle as well as the uh, nail fold involvement. So there is varicose hyperkeratotic lesions. Fingernails are most commonly involved as compared to the toenails. The treatment is important because uh, we have to basically prevent the spread. Uh, keratolytic agents, salicylic acid creams are available. Urea in 20%, 40% is available. Uh, trichloroacetic acid application, lactic acid. Intralesional bleomycin can be given in uh, children more than 12 years of age. It's a painful procedure, but if the warts are not going, then we have to sometimes do that. Oral acetretin in the, in the dose of 3 to 5 milligram per kg body weight. Surgical modalities, uh, cryotherapy, excision, radiofrequency laser and laser ablation are all uh, can be done. This is a case of uh, subungual uh, hyper. Uh, so it's basically a periangual wart, which you can see this varicose growth. And it's very difficult to treat. So it's like we have to sometimes uh, lead, we have to do great measures to treat this problem. Melanikia strita is basically presents a sharp, uh, sharply demarcated longitudinal pigment band of even width. The children, uh, the incidence is low. The management is conservative. Only thing, uh, the biopsy is required if the lesion, if the lesion getting gets more darker. There is increase in the width of the band. There is pigment variegation or variation in the pigment. Periangle pigmentation happens on the uh, sub of the proximal nail bed, and the nail dystrophy happens. So these are the uh, reasons to do a biopsy. So uh, in the next, so this is what I'm talking about. So these are the pigment uh, striata, which we are seeing. The last entity is the traumatic. Uh, so nail biting or uh, onychophagia, which as we say, is a type of OCD or an anxiety disorder. So 20 to 33 percent in, in and around 10 years old, we have commonly seen this problem. The, the nail becomes irreversibly short. There is paronychia, which can lead, uh, which can happen. Ragged cuticles are there. Hang nails are there. So basically, behavioral changes. We basically need to uh, ther give therapy to the child in the form of that. All this can lead to uh, ragged nails, and they can be paronychia. So basically, uh, OCD, like an anxiety disorder. Other is a habitic uh, deformity, which is basically a habitual external trauma to the nail matrix. It basically presents a series of transverse depression from proximal to distal end. The cuticle is lost. Lunula becomes elongated and pyramidal. The proximal nail fold becomes thickened. And uh, treatment is basically complete session, cessation of the habit. So this is all, all mainly seen in children uh, who are in this teenager phases. Nail changes in nutritional deficiency. So these are few of the nail changes which we can see. So an icomedicis uh, buse line can be seen in protein, energy, malnutrition or zinc deficiency. Coilonychia is uh, iron deficiency. Nail fragility, selenium, again, uh, protein, energy, malnutrition, zinc. Melanonychia. So if a child comes up with any of these deficiencies and if we see the nail, there could be few changes. Uh, so it's I would not say this is a clear cut uh, to make a diagnosis, but yeah, associated features can be seen in these children. So thank you. Uh, I hope uh, it, it was a brief introduction to common nail disorders, which might be helpful in the clinical practice. So at